From the very early days of its prototype self-driving Toyota Prius and Lexus hybrid cars, through to its in-house pod-like electric runabouts, and more recently, its Level 5 Ready Pacifica hybrid minivans, Google, uh, Alphabet, or should that be Waymo, its self-driving vehicle division, has been at the forefront of autonomous car tech. Other automakers may have semi-autonomous driving technology in production vehicles and may be improving that technology on a regular basis. Tesla says, for example, we'll see a new advanced summon mode for its cars in the near future. But when it comes to development and visible prototypes on the road, well, Waymo's up there. Because many countries don't yet have regulation pertaining to fully autonomous cars on the books, the US currently has autonomous car legislation progressing through both houses, but it's unlikely they'll get passed before the end of this year, forcing them to be reintroduced next. Autonomous cars have been required to have a backup human driver behind the wheel, ready to take over in an emergency. Now that's changing in the state of California. As some of you may remember, earlier this year, the state passed a set of regulations making it possible for tech companies and automakers to test autonomous vehicles on the public highway without anyone behind the driver's seat. This week, Waymo became the first company to receive official approval from the state to do just that. So what does this mean? Will we now see robotic cars clogging up the five or crawling along 101? And is the whole thing safe? If you pay attention to some of the headlines that have been written on the subject this week, you'd be forgiven for thinking that driverless cars will be everywhere in a matter of weeks and we'll see increased crashes as those autonomous prototypes hit the road without a human behind the wheel. But this isn't quite the case and this isn't a sci-fi horror movie. And it's already been happening in the Valley of the Sun, that's the Phoenix metro area in Arizona, for more than a year. That said, there are some significant differences between what's been going on in Arizona and what Waymo has just received approval to do in California. You see, Arizona has a far lower population density, even in its major cities, than California does. Additionally, while Waymo was originally operating under a special permit from the state, before Governor Ducey signed an executive order allowing autonomous vehicles to be driven without a driver behind the wheel, Arizona's regulations concerning autonomous vehicles are, well, not so tough to comply with. For example, Arizona requires autonomous vehicles to achieve a reasonably safe state, such as bringing the vehicle to a complete stop upon experiencing a failure of the vehicle's automated driving systems. Automated vehicles must also comply with all of the state's traffic and safety laws and must meet all of the applicable title, registration, licensing and insurance requirements that any Arizonan behind the wheel must meet. But in California, things are kicked up a whole lot more. And that means that in order for Waymo to test its cars in the Golden State, it must meet a whole lot more things. First, Waymo, or any other company, has to demonstrate that it has an insurance or bond to the tune of 5 million US dollars to ensure that, in the event of an accident, appropriate funds are available to cover any associated insurance claims. Next, the company in question has to demonstrate that it can monitor the status of its test vehicles and their passengers remotely at all times, and that trained operators, remote operators, are there to take over the operation of the car in the event that the car cannot drive itself. Then, companies petitioning for autonomous licensing must show that they have complied with all federal rules concerning vehicle design or have special exemption from federal authorities. In addition to this, they also have to develop plans for first responders and law enforcement so that in the case of an emergency, the vehicle and its occupants are safely dealt with. Finally, the company must certify its vehicles can operate without a driver. And while this last one is self-administered, the California DMV has the ability to immediately revoke a driverless testing permit at any point if it disagrees with that assessment. In short, California requires some pretty strict regulations and criteria be met by a company before it can begin fully autonomous driverless testing on its roads. And even then, there's always someone watching the car while it's in operation, ready to remotely jump in and help if required. That, I hope, should answer the questions over safety. Thus far, Waymo's safety record has been pretty good. And while there have been accidents, they've either happened when a human was behind the wheel operating the car out of autonomous mode, or when the car was hit by someone else. 
As for where you can see them, right now Waymo says we'll only see driverless cars in Mountain View, Sunnyvale, Los Altos, Los Altos Hills and Palo Alto in the South Bay area. While it will continue testing its vehicles outside of these areas, they will continue to operate with a human supervisor behind the wheel. As to other companies, well, expect them to join Waymo in the coming months. But with such high financial requirements and some pretty strict regulations, don't expect every Tom, Dick and Harry to test their autonomous cars on the road. And because I know someone will ask, no, this doesn't mean you can activate Tesla Autopilot in your car and then fall asleep or climb in the back. Don't do it. The system isn't approved for that kind of operation yet even if you think it is. Well, that's it. Thanks for joining me and see you next time.